Okay, so this is an example of how to do exponential smoothing in Excel. And we're going to get started by looking at the formula. So the formula for exponential smoothing is that the forecast at time t plus 1 equals alpha times demand at time t plus 1 minus alpha at times the forecast at time t. So that means we need two pieces of information. We need demand at time t and we need the forecast that was created at that for that same period. And we're going to weigh them based on the smoothing constant alpha that we choose. And that will then uh, give us the uh, forecast in the next period. Okay, so the, the first uh, starting point is we need to have a starting value that we need to use uh, to, to be able to implement exponential smoothing. So that means in this case, really what we have to do is we have to start with a guess. The better the guess, the better the forecast turns out to be. Um, in this case, if we look at the demand, it seems to hover around 100, uh, goes up and down. So what we're going to choose in this case, we're just going to start with 100. Now, um, Next, uh, after that, we can start almost implementing the formula. However, we're going to choose an alpha value of 0.3, just so so there is something that drives that formula. Other, otherwise, the, the formula will, will not really make sense. But you can also do it afterwards. Um, so, let's get started. Our forecast equals alpha, which we have right in here. You could alternatively type it also in to the formula if, if you don't want to change the alpha at all. If, if you know what alpha you want to want to use, then you can just type it in. We want to hit F4 to fix the cell, or alternatively you can uh, place a dollar sign in between the O and the 2 in this case. Multiply by demand at time t. Since this forecast is for t plus 1, that means we have to go one month back or in this case, we are at the end of January, we've served that demand, and we're going to make a prediction for how much uh, we're going to sell in February. Plus 1 minus alpha, which again needs to be fixed. Close parentheses, multiplied by forecast in period 1 of January, which was our, our guess of 100. Okay, so the result is 106. In this case, another thing that we should do, because demand is just in uh, full integers, we, we don't want to get any fractions. So we're going to apply the round function to this forecast, just to make sure that we, we don't forecast half units or so on. By doing that, we just type in round right after the equal sign, open parentheses, and then go all the way to the end of the formula. We say comma, then we look at the second argument of that function. We, we want to tell it how many decimals there are to be left. We want to say zero. We don't want any decimals. And then we close parentheses, and that's it. Okay. So our forecast is 106. We could now basically drag down this formula, and it will create a forecast. Now if we look at this forecast, it looks, looks pretty good. It doesn't pick up all the variance, but most of that is noise, since true demand seems to hover right around 100. Um, by playing around with alpha, let's say we're going to choose 0.4, we can change how um, the forecast reacts to demand. If we go smaller, like a 0.1, then it becomes more stable. So that's the nice thing about having alpha in a separate cell. You can just type in the value for alpha, and it will change how, how good the forecast is. Now, in order to really tell how good the forecast is, we have to implement some accuracy measures. And I prepared one, two, three, four, five of them. The mean error, the mean absolute error, the mean absolute percentage error, and the mean squared error, and the u-statistic primary. Now, for the u-statistic, uh, 
there are two terms that are necessary. One is the squared error and the other one is the uh, accuracy of a forecast that would be produced by the naive method. And uh, I'll show you right now how all of that is done. So forecast error is demand minus forecast. Our absolute uh, error would basically be the absolute value of that error. Our percentage error would be, uh, and in this case we're going to do absolute percentage error. It will be our absolute error divided by demand. Our squared error would be our forecast error that we just calculated raised to the second power. And then finally the denominator that we need for the TLCU statistic is uh, the uh, forecast accuracy that we would have obtained with the naive method, which in this case we're going to subtract, we're going to take current demand and then subtract the demand one period ago, because that's what the naive method was, would use as a forecast. we we'll raise that to the second power. So now I can take all of these and I can copy them down. And here's our accuracy measure. I turned on conditional forecasting just so we can see how good our forecast is. Um, it's nice to see visually as well as uh, in numerical values, I think. Now, to calculate the mean error, we just take the average of the column where we calculated the error. Just like so. To calculate the mean absolute error, it's again the average of column F, which is the absolute error. The mean absolute percentage error is the average of column G, which is the absolute percent error. The mean squared error is the average of all the squared errors. And then finally, TLCU statistic is the square root of the sum careful to actually do the sum and not the average, the sum of the squared errors divided by the sum of the squared errors that we would obtain with the, U, with the naive forecast method. And close two parentheses, and here we go. Okay. Now this is already looking pretty good. Uh, the only other thing that we could do is basically say, well, let's see if we can do better with different alpha values. In this case, um, we raise alpha, it goes a little worse. Maybe let's try 0.15. No, 0.1 is still better. Um, I'm looking at the MSC basically to tell how good the forecast is. Um, you, well, you, you could do this manually and see uh, uh, how, uh, how good the forecast is. However, if, uh, if you want to not do it manually and you want to find a way of, uh, of finding the optimal value right away, then one uh, very good method to use is this goal seek. And goal seek basically changes a certain cell until a uh, condition that you specify, basically another cell, reaches a certain value. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to set a cell, in this case the mean squared error, to the lowest value possible. I'm going to type in zero, it can't be negative. By changing another cell, in this case, in this case will be alpha, and once I hit OK, it just tries different values for alpha till it finds the best or the lowest MSE possible. So once I hit OK, we'll go through several iterations and it will see if a uh, value of alpha gives us the lowest MSE. So in this case, 0 0.101 would give us the best value for alpha, which means the best forecast. Okay, so this was um, 
exponential smoothing in Excel, and we use Goal Seek to optimize Alpha.